Welcome, how's everyone doing today? Today we're watching the Season 3 History and Lore, and most likely this is going to be uploaded before the Season 3 finale, just because I had some copyright issues that I don't agree with, so I'm disputing them, and that takes like two days before I can actually even upload the video, regardless of even if I like am right and there's no copyright issue, I can't upload it for two days. So that probably will be out May 2nd, maybe at the end of may 1st but most likely may 2nd um and so i want to give you guys something to watch before that so here i am watching this as you could probably also tell it is very reduced in length because i kind of cut out everything that i already knew because i wasn't really having a reaction to it i already knew it so what's the point in even like hearing it again because either it was in the other histories and lore or you guys told me about it in the comment so there's really no point in my reaction to it so everything that i'm reacting to i thought was interesting or i hadn't heard before so let's go valyria was not the first to conquer the world really the dawn of days the city of Geese opened its city gates of and Geese. poured forth its legions across the continent of Essos. With their lockstep discipline and absolute obedience, they ground entire nations beneath their boots and planted the harpy in every corner of the Oh, world. okay. Okay. What they didn't destroy, they chained. Slavery is as old as man, but until the Giscari, it was never an art. The slave lords grew rich and fat as pyramids were raised around them. Pleasure houses were filled, and fighting pits were open. Nobody remembers if the waters around Geese had names before the Empire, but ever since, we know them only as Slaver's Bay. Slaver's the Bay. Of grief. The Gulf of Grief. Of Geese, however, Those are kind of cool names. nothing remains but ruins, where hmm. end all great civilizations. Five thousand years ago, Valyrian uh, shepherds stumbled on strange eggs. That'll do a it. few generations, an upstart Valyrian freehold rose across the sea. Five times did the Giscari contend with Valyria, and five times did they go down in defeat. Yeah, you can't be dragons. I'm sorry, you can't be dragons. dragons. And the Empire had none. The best of their legions burned, the others broke. The brick walls of Geese were pulled down, the streets and buildings turned to ash, and the very fields sown with salt, sulfur, and skulls. Yet the Empire was not wholly destroyed. Astapor, Yunkai, and Marine... Oh, okay. So Daenerys is better than uh, everyone else who couldn't take those cities. Valyria had She's already gotten, what, Astapor and Yunkai? ...off the backs of conquered peoples, and now the self-styled Freehold wanted its turn. While the Dragon Lords brought the world to heal, the slave market... Technically Karth, too. ...never lacked for flesh. Lamenting the lost empire, the descendants of old geese grew rich and fat. The doom fell on Valyria. R.I.P. The Dothraki rose to pillage most of the continent at will. But gold-laden Astapor, Yunkai, and Marine continue as they have wow. for thousands of years. So Astapor, Yunkai, and Marine are older than the horse Valyria was. What the Giscari taught Valyria so long ago. What good are slaves without slavers? Fair enough. When the doom claimed Valyria, the great freehold fractured into warring cities and upstart nations, hmm. ripe for the taking. Out of these swarmed the Dothraki, Ooh, the horse lords the of the plains who feared only defeat and dragons. Yeah, now no more dragons, dragons maybe. Gone. Under the great Dothraki Carl are Tenwell, pretty cool, to be they honest. They and burnt every town and city in their path. No army could stand against them, because the Dothraki do not stand. The horse lords do not draw up battle lines or hide behind shield walls or layer themselves in armor. The Dothraki charge. Ah, oh, they're savages. Their blades are more scythe and sword, the better to cull. They the just ride in and hope you die. Stride. Even their archers fire from horseback so that advancing or retreating, the arrows never cease. Wow. To the Dothraki, a man who does not ride is no man at all. Without honor or pride. Have you all know how to ride a horse? When I've never even been near a horse. When so. Tema was coming, they strengthened their walls, doubled their own guards, and hired two full companies of sales Wow. Okay. The Dothraki were used to glorified farmers with spears. Kulho would show them a proper army, with mounted and armored cavalry to match the horde's own. 
As an afterthought, the city leaders sent an envoy to Astapor to buy Unsullied. The slavers had always claimed that the Unsullied were the great Giscari legions come again. Oh yeah, we know Fuken. about them Unsullied. The dragon-burned ruins of Old Geese were a stark reminder that the age of the foot soldier was over. The envoy had his orders, however, and quickly bought 3,000 Unsullied for the long march back. For Unsullied, do not ride. But while they marched, Carl Temu arrived at Oh my god, they they obliterated the cell swords. Finally face a challenge. By the end of the battle, crows and wolves feasted on what remained of Quohor's heavy That's crazy. Horse. All the cell swords had fled. Quohor knew that the Dothraki would very soon break through the gates to rape, slave, and burn at their pleasure. Yet the next day, Carl Temu woke to find before the gates 3,000 eunuchs in formation, armed with only spears, shields, and spiked arrows. 3,000, huh? The Unsullied had slipped past the Kull's army. Paris has more than Dothraki double feasted. that. Kull Temu had many times their number and could easily have flanked the small force. But to the Dothraki, men on foot are fit only to be ridden down. 18 times the horse lords charged, and 18 times the Unsullied Are you kidding? 18 times? Shields, lowered their spears, and held the line against 20,000 Dothraki squads. 20,000 versus when three? When the Carl's archers rained arrows on them, the Unsullied lifted their shields above their heads. Yo, the I cannot passed. wait to see the Doth... And then they held the Sorry. line. Sorry. Cannot wait to see the Dothraki in, the end, in uh, combat. 3,000 beat 20,000. Dothraki lay dead, including Carl Temu and all his sons. Wow. The new Carl led the survivors past the city gates, where one by one, each man cut off his braid and threw it down before the feet of the Unsullied. Damn. Defeated and shamed forever. Since that day, the yeah, Unsullied, the Unsullied filled are crazy. the ranks of cities and households wealthy enough or desperate enough. Cell swords fight for gold, knights for glory, and Dothraki for blood. To a man, the Unsullied fight only to obey. With the right master over them, Imagine how the forces of chaos would break against their shields. The Daenerys Targaryen, the baby. The re well, she's not the their master. She's just the their like, leader. You know, they follow her. It's not a master situation. Mine. Oh That's God, it's Joffrey. Is. The small folk say its color comes from the blood Aegon spilled. What did I just say? <laughs> Fool. I don't even know. I'll play that Blood back. Doesn't soak into stone, no matter how hard I try. You're a sick bastard, Joffrey. Aegon built his castle of red rock to remind people of the fires he'd roasted his enemies in. True. So True. whenever King's Landing locked up, they'd see the price of defiance. He knew the first rule of kings: only fear keeps men no, in mind. No, no, no. Fear. And punishment. Nah, fear and love, baby. The lesson he taught his son, Magor. When the builders finally finished the Red Keep, Magor executed them all to keep its secrets safe. <laughs> That's pretty and hardcore. Hazard, miles of hidden passageways run behind the walls and under the floors. Yeah, we saw that with Arya in season one, one right? When she like found like some secret entrance into the dungeons. A king has no need for secrecy. Now, people name Magor the Cruel, but I doubt any dared in his day. His strength was all too rare in the degenerate Targaryen blood. The simpering Baelor, the Blessed, created the Maiden Vault to imprison his own sisters and save himself from carnal thoughts. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Though, I admit a prince vault could be amusing. When Tommen bores me. Oh my god. My favorite place in the Red Keep? There's so many. The Traitor's Walk, where I mount the heads of my enemies. It's a shame flesh rots so slowly. I've almost run out of spikes. The dungeons are also quite nice once you get past the first two levels. A stable for common criminals and private cells for useful highborns. How boring, I know. But then you come to the black cells. The no black windows, cells. Is that where Ned no was? Torches. Yeah, because he was just in some dark. like dark room on the floor. Whatever you hear in there, it 
with you. Oh my god. Here we keep the greatest traitors until the king is ready for them. And with these, I often like to take my time. We but saw that, we saw that. An even lower, hidden level. Lower? Labor's favorite. Once a man was taken here, he never saw the sun again, nor heard a human voice, nor oh breathed God. a breath free of agonizing pain. Varus must know the way, but that overgrown girl pretends not to. Maybe he fears I'll make him a victim. Maybe I will. Then again, torture chambers are just so private. Oh yeah, you'd want it to be public, you sicko, wouldn't you? Yeah, you're a sicko. Like that Targaryen who forced his nephew to watch as he fed the boy's traitor mother to a dragon. What? Oh, what I could do with a dragon. Yo, that's sick. <laughs> that's messed up. Knew to burn men alive with an audience to spread the terror far and wide across his kingdom. Oh my god. Of course, I know my favorite place now. When I sit on the Iron Throne, high in the Red Keep, all of Westeros scuttles below me. Oh yeah, until Tywin walks in, and then you're a little girl. Waiting for my heel. Nah, you're scared of Tywin, don't lie. Mud men. Bog devils. Those are just the most pleasant names our fellow northerners have for us. The Kranig men who live in the swamp. Is this a... Uh, because we do not live in castles like them. Because we do not farm like them. Because we are not tall or rich like them. But through our veins flows the same blood of the first men. And, at times, maybe something more. We still live much as they did. On floating islands in houses of thatch and woven... Floating rings. islands, huh? We fish hunt and tell our children of our heroes the knight of the laughing tree who fought in the year of the false spring the last marsh king who challenged the starks and lost his crown and his daughter and other stories older still since lost to the world the neck was not always a swamp really in the dawn age it was as dry and fertile as the well, I hope they the changed north. the whole biome but during the war with the first men the children of the forest brought down the hammer of waters on the neck, trying what? to break Westeros in two. When the waters finally receded, they left the bogs and swamps we know oh today. Oh my god. Many of the first men decided to fight Yo. on, but my ancestors wisely chose to heed the children's power. Yeah, the children must be like OP. They beat their Are they all dead now? Fox spears and fish hooks, and settled a land forever devastated by the folly of war. They Unlike must be, the right? of Westeros. We keep no garrisons and raise no soldiers for petty spats with our neighbors. Our land protects its own. An outsider will find in the neck an endless morass of suck holes, quicksands, and green grass that looks solid to the unwary eye, but turns to water the instant you tread on it. If you're lucky enough That's to be awful. Armed, you'll only drown inside your own steel. <laughs> oh yeah, your own. If you're not. You get to meet what swims in that water. What? Serpents and monsters. No way. That's got to be a myth, right? Daggers are never enough to eat. There's no way that's real. Don't worry. Only your horse will live long enough to feel their poisons burning through. It. Fair enough. If you somehow survive all this, you may find that a well-placed dart can be as deadly as any blade. Not that you'll see us blowing it your way. Damn. Since the fall, the reeds are pretty cool. I won't lie. Reed has ruled the neck. Beneath the banner of a black they got like their own little like area in a like Westeros. I don't know what else to say, but to that's cool. Country. They got like their own our biome. Greywater Watch is no castle you've ever seen. What is it? And seeing it once does not mean you'll ever find it again. What? For Greywater Watch moves. Many would-be conquerors have died trying to find us. Whoa. With war all around and our Stark Lord besieged That's on all awesome. sides, many more will doubtless Yeah, I want to learn more about them. They will look at us on a map and see a stranglehold for the north. And they will forget that the sea itself once entered the neck. And not all of it returned.
Like the Starks, the oh, blood of Hasbolt Boltons. runs back to the first man. Come on, man. I'm not trying to Singers hear the Boltons. call those times the age of heroes. A mask for a savage world that bred savage men. The Lannisters swindled their enemies. The Storm Kings hammered them. And the Starks cut off their heads. In such company as this, were the Boltons really so indelicate? Oh, so this is like Unlike a common thing houses, they do to people. Theon's not the first to be tied to those wooden words. stakes. Our blades are sharp. They pass down not a Valerian greatsword, but a knife, honed and thin enough to fit between the topmost layer of skin and the tissue below. Whoa, and is that what's going to happen to Theon? For as we all learned as children, a naked man has few secrets. Are they going to flay the Theon? In those dark days, they say that some of my more willful forebearers would even wear their enemies' skins as cloaks. But no such tokens remain, if they ever existed. Yo. Certainly not hanging in some secret room in the Dreadfort, as old wives and fools insist. Well, the flayed man, huh? I suspect my house itself was responsible for spreading such rumors in the first place. Few weapons are as effective as terror. And this was an age of war. House against house. Brother against brother. The Iron Men were on the rise, and never far from our shores. We must have seemed ripe for the taking. Too busy fighting each other to deal with the raiders as they deserved. Thus the Starks took it upon themselves to unify the North. Under them. They drove the pirates out of White Knife, and claimed the eastern coast and married the Marsh King's yeah, daughter did. for the neck. A Stark wrestled they for wrestled Bear Island. They wrestled for Bear Island? Or so they say. <laughs> silly story. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's Blood a silly and story. On the, north. And the Starks had the most of both. After years of war, my ancestors gave up their barbaric practices and bent the knees. So they don't flay people kings. anymore. Thus House Bolton became what we are today. Loyal bannermen and staunch ally to the Starks. And the second greatest house. Yeah, the I don't know about that. Other houses chose dragons, krakens, and lions for their sigils. We Tullys took. Hey, nothing wrong trout, with the trout. That most terrifying of fish, especially when it leaps out of the water. I suppose you don't have many options when you live in the Riverlands. Could have been worse. We could have been minnows or wheat. After all, we make a lot of it. Though our land doesn't get as fertile as ours yeah. just by water. That's the old fair. weather kings, storm kings, and the kings of the rock spilled blood here for thousands of years, squabbling like children over a new toy until the ironborn came. And spanked the Ironborn, huh? Oh, oh right, yeah, Heron the Black, and he built the Heron Hall, right? Yeah, they built yeah, the yeah. The largest castle Westeros had ever seen. Maesters teach that Haran was a fool, but he had some sense. If you're going to enslave and torture an entire people, you best have thick. That walls. is very true. But the very day the last stone was laid in Haran Hall. Oh, you you know that was on purpose. He's like, all right, your castle's built. Let's see what it can withstand. Roar! I doubt Haran even noticed. The problem with huge castles is they blind you to what's outside, both by their size and the arrogance they inspire. Not that the Ironborn ever lacked for that. They take pride in their ignorance of every trapping of civilization. Though any baker could have told them that fire turns stone walls True. into an oven. And so Haran the Black finally lived up to his name, and the River Lord swept the Ironborn back to the sea. In return for Edmund's service, House Tully was made Aegon's new Lord Paramount of the Trident, and all the other lords had to swear us fealty. But old habits die hard. The Riverlands are and always have been the middle child of Westeros, caught up in every fart from Yeah, one it does seem like an unfortunate place. My ancestors knew that for the Tullys to survive, alliances must be made. 
Our trout has swum up so many rivers over the centuries and leapt onto so many plates that it's a wonder half the realm's city will have fins by now. Thus, every Tully child is taught family, duty, family, duty, honor. honor huh? The Tully like words and pains in the Tully ass. When I returned from the War of the Nine Penny Kings, people called me Sir Brendan. Sir Brendan. But my older brother Hoster called me engaged. A great match with a very rich house, to be sure. But I just fought and killed a great deal of men and had no <laughs> desire to be told when. Yeah, I'd probably be the man. same way. I'm not going to lie. I, broke I wouldn't want to be doing that. Earning the name Blackfish. Oh, that's such an awesome name. The Blackfish. A much more intimidating oh, black that's so cool. trout. I was too stubborn at the time to realize that while other houses fight with swords, House Tully fights Ooh, with I like that. Then my niece Catherine, like that. the betrothal to Brandon Stark, drew us into the war against the Mad King, while my other niece Lysa's betrothal to John Aaron cemented the rebellion. If I'd have obeyed my older brother earlier, we'd have had the largest navy in Westeros with us then as well, and our victory would have been swift. Of course, I never mentioned this fact to my brother. He'd have taken it as an <laughs> apology. My brother is dead now. And it, uh, my Edmure. nephew Edmure rules in River Run. God's help us. A trout that can't tell the Edmure world is from the of, hook. Uh... But he is a Tully, and he is unmarried, and there is a war. We all know how this story ends. Yeah, we do. You uh, you end up getting married to a Frey, and then you go to your bedding, and then everyone you know and love is slaughtered in front of you, and you have to watch as you sit in your chair through the screen and want to kill all the Freys. His duty to family and swallow it. One blackfish per family can be overlooked. Two, and we'd have to change all those pretty. Yeah, you don't want two blackfishes. Hey, the reach, the reach is aptly named. We're the ones who give your hands something to do at the table. As the most fertile region of the Seven Kingdoms, we grow the lion's share of the grains and fruit that feed this country. Especially now, since the rebels have burned down the other fields. Thankfully, House Tyrell is here to do its duty to the crown and keep okay, the capital Okay, okay, House Tyrell. Starvation. Yet, as with all gardens, weeds grow in the reach too, though few name them as such. Singers fill our heads with chivalry and courtly love, fluff to make boys fight and girls <laughs> swoon. Oh, the songs are good enough for a pleasure barge down the Manda. They give pleasure to the common people and harmony to the realm. But if the rise of House Tyrell proves anything, it's that virtue and honor have their place. And if you're not careful, that place Ooh, is the okay. grave. Unlike the Lannisters, Starks, and Arons, we were never kings in our own right. House, House Gardener, Gardener huh? the Reach since the Dawn Age, and we were their stewards. While they warred to enrich their already rich domain, we managed their castle of High Garden. But then Aegon I like how all these stories with houses Arons. are like everything was great until Aegon came. <laughs> Anyone could see that a man who grows flowers should be well. Yeah, that was kind of foolish to meet him in the field. I don't know what he was thinking. But maybe it wasn't wholly Ooh. his idea. Maybe someone whispered in his ear about all the Ooh, face Ooh, the Tyrells. He stayed home. The rest is history. Are you serious? The Tyrells, like, manipulated face, them? Along with his body. And his steward, Harlan Tyrell, promptly yielded high I respect that. Aegon. Hey, game My is game, right? My swears that Harlan was like most of our men and grew up banging steel together too loudly for a thought to penetrate. But luckily, his wife... They usually do. Sense. They usually do. Whatever the case, in return for Harlan's show of sense, Aegon proclaimed House Tyrell the Lords of the Reach and Wardens of the South, passing over all the other houses with better okay. claims. House Hightower, who were kings before the Andals came, their seat is the oldest, oldest city, city in Westeros. They call it Old Town. <laughs> oh, it's the oldest city. Uh, old the Town. Towers who wouldn't come down from their great lighthouse for decades. Its name, fittingly, is the High Tower. Fair enough. Fair enough. House Florent, who had actual blood ties to the gardeners. 
They whinge about their ancient rights to High Garden every once in a while. And now that their daughter is married to Stannis Baratheon, about their rights no, to No, no, no. You don't have no rights too. to Westeros. Apparently, putting a fox on your banners doesn't impart a fox's <laughs> wiles. House Tarly, who still gives the Reach the best soldiers it has. If Aegon had named them as his lords, the Reach would have become the greatest military camp in the world until it starved <laughs> to death. The price for conscripting all the farmers. Yet Aegon chose us. Centuries later, when his descendant Ares faced rebellion, the Reach you did, you stayed did. loyal. Mostly. My father, Mace, dealt Robert his only defeat in the war, even if it was my father's vanguard who did most of the fighting before he arrived. After the Battle of Ashford, we laid siege to Storm's You did fail at that, though. Home. Yeah, you did fail at that. the war ended before we could take it and free up our armies to go save the king. The new King Robert had a forgiving nature. Our crimes were brushed aside without even really? one execution for the sake I'm of surprised. Humanity. Our yeah, I am too. Until Robert's new hand, John Aaron, came by with the bill. <laughs> the Not the bill! The oh my... <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious. That's one way to uh, deal with people who betrayed you. Here, you're fine. And later, when Here's he the bill, baby. Grain or fruit or wine, he gave them back at whatever yeah, that's fair, though. That's fair. Now, much of Westeros is ashes. The rest of it is armies. As the Starks are fond of saying, oh boy. winter is coming. And for leagues outside the capital, there isn't a harvest to be seen. Have no fear. The Reach is, as always... So the Reach is like one of the most important kingdoms in Westeros. Because they have like all the food and like the a good amount of gold. We once were. Just That's crazy. Garden. The Reach is so important. Impregnable. Alright, now we're learning about the Veil. Vale. Shielded from Westeros by its mountains. They call the entrance to their land the Bloody Gate because during the Age of Heroes, a dozen armies supposedly smashed themselves against it. Even if they'd gotten through, the roads of the Vale are narrow, steep, and treacherous. Yeah, we've seen that, we've seen Half that. Half the men would have slipped to their deaths, or frozen in the mountain snow, or so the common wisdom goes. Except the Vale has been conquered. Those vaunted mountains didn't stop the Andals who came by the Eastern Sea. The people of the Vale say that Sir Artus Arryn, the Andal general, flew on what? the back of a giant falcon. No way, he flew on a falcon. On top of the tallest Is that mountain. true? During Aegon's conquest, one of his sisters did the same. Flying okay, I do believe that. I do believe that. The Eyrie, the Arryn stronghold. And the Arryn boy king yielded the Vale in return for a ride <laughs> on the beast. Do you sense yeah, you need a flying there? beast. The rationalizing of defeats with mythical beasts and the whims of children. Well, dragons are real. Let's be, let's, let's be real. The, root cause, the arrogance of isolation. The men of the Vale are so proud of their mountains, they can't abide any flaw in them. As with the mountains, so too with their blood. The first Andals landed in the Vale as its most powerful lords. Okay. The Barons, the Waynewoods, the Corbrays, like to brag. Through their veins runs the blood of the oldest Andal nobility in Westeros. But through their brains runs an even older folly. That blood mm. matters. If it did, those pure-born lords should have been able to exterminate the Hill oh Tribes. Oh my god, I forgot ago. about the Hill Tribes. But those primitive raiders... Whose tribes more resemble kennels. Those were the families. people who captured Tyrion, right? The Vale, even kidnapping an Aaron once. Until yeah, Tyrion yeah, Lannister, yeah. Lannister, an outsider, no Vale lord ever thought to turn the tribes to the Vale's really? advantage. That a desperate they never thought to do that. Could be useful, not to mention inexpensive. But perhaps the Vale lords consider such thoughts beneath them. After all. The Vale's isolation does breed an abundance of honor Fair and enough. fleeting, which governs their decisions instead of foresight. Like a blind man who can only guess where his horse is taking him. I doubt John Aaron had even prepared for civil war when he raised his banners instead of handing over his young wards, Ned Stark and Robert Baratheon, to the Mad King. Honor demanded, and Lord Aaron obeyed. He'd have done the same if the boys hadn't been the lords of two great houses. 
who could field mighty you think armies so? of their own. But perhaps I give him too little credit. After all, if the war went against them, only Lord Aaron had a nice, impregnable... Yeah, that is fair. That is... You know, if he was thinking like that, that's not a bad move. Although Winterfell... Uh, Winterfell could be... Yeah. John Aaron won, then John Aaron died. Wisely, the Vale stayed out of all the ensuing chaos. Its crops did not burn or wither in the fields from lack of men to tend them. Its strength was not drained. I complete. I didn't even realize yet. The Vale literally did not get itself involved in at vale, all in the War of the Five Kings. Has. Calm, proud, a world of high honor undisturbed by armies and men of low birth but high ambition. Impressive. Yeah, goddamn. The Vale is so cool. I never really stopped to think about the For Vale, to be honest. For years, the Targaryen dynasty ruled Westeros. Wars were still fought, homes still burned, and men still died. But compared to the chaos of what came before, the realm was stable. And boring. Really? The Targaryens lied, thieved, <laughs> and killed as much as other lords. They just had dragons to answer all complaints. Until they did Yeah, that's a good way to answer when complaints, the last though. Dragon died, it was only a matter of time. Yeah, what caused all the dragons followed. to die? They just stopped hatching eggs? By only, you mean another century? Which they wasted trying to replace their lost advantage. Incinerating their own palaces to hatch dragon eggs, drinking wildfire to become dragons. Oh my god. And let's not what? forget the Mad King's favorite burning men alive so he could pretend to be a yeah he we did do that he did do that pardon brandon stark the boy had threatened prince rhaegar but rhaegar had stolen the boy's sister and the boy was the eldest son of our warden of the north who's the greater fool a mad king or the man who reasons with him Ares saw knives in every shadow <laughs> when yeah i like this i like how they're going back and forth constantly with each afraid. other and what Varys did, and Lord Baelish are pretty cool. Killed. I like them. I wouldn't have thought you of all people would bother with recriminations for Brandon's death. Oh, right. They, I forgot. He's the one Not who, like, caught him from fucking shoulder to balls or whatever he said. Brandon was as arrogant <laughs> Is that as what he, he was said? stupid. Like his father, Lord Stark. Lord Baelish, you're a little biased. You're a little biased. But the younger son, Ned, what was his crime? That Ares ordered his sorry, death guys. as well. <laughs> Unlike men, families don't oh, die really? when you lop off their head. At the very least, you true, should have pointed true. out that loyal and dutiful Ned was living with John Aaron, a proud and over-righteous lord with an impregnable castle and no sons of his own. Perhaps you could have spared Ares the embarrassment of revolt. If only we'd had the foresight to consult you, Lord Baelish, but I suppose first we'd have had to know who you were. Yeah, where was Lord Baelish? Nobody Come on. Nobody knew Robert Baratheon either, yet he claimed the right to sit on the Iron Throne. He had Targaryen blood through his mother. A pretty dress for an ugly truth. It was war, and he could <laughs> swing a hammer harder than the other options. When did you know Yeah, he did seem like he was a beast back then. When Robert Baratheon killed Prince Rhaegar on the Trident. Wrong. You lost the war when you let Ned Stark slip back into the north. Neither the bloody gate of the Vale mm. nor Mo Kalen in the north have ever fallen. They could have held out for years, even if you'd killed Robert. But you let him slip through your fingers as well. I told the court that Robert was hiding Ooh, in the that's steady a... sept, but Lord the hand Baelish, of the I like that. wasted too much time searching the city. Something about the glory of single combat. Then Who was the Hand of the King at this time? To save the day. Too bad Lord Tywin wasn't Hand any longer. He would have simply raised the town and been done with it. Perhaps. And yeah, but Tywin was a pussy. He showed up right at the end. Such a pussy servant. move. I'd almost forgotten. You weren't always so loyal to the Lannisters. Joffrey was kind of right. He did hide at Castle Rock I until it was over. Duty to the realm. When Lord Tywin showed up at King's Landing, professing loyalty, I warned Aerys not to open the gates. Prince Rhaegar was dead, our army scattered. The lion does not stir unless he smells meat. I admire your powers of persuasion, True. Lord Varys. Few could traffic in so many secrets to so little avail. 
Grand Maester Pycelle told Ares what he wanted to hear, that his old friend Tywin was there to save him. Pycelle, you bitch! Then Pycelle, Ares, you bitch! His old friend sacked the city, and his son stabbed Ares. In the yep, and then Jamie and Lannister did what, what he had to do. He saved millions of people. As He's not the king slayer. We know the truth now, and I will never call him the king slayer again. His name is Jamie motherfucking me. Lannister. You. King Robert wisely Although he's still questionably he's still questionable to me. John Sometimes he does some things I don't know. Robert, but but John he's not the king slayer. Then Robert, then Ned. So ended their glorious revolution. And Westeros Yeah, they all died very quickly. Since. Let it. How Targaryen of you. One of the mad ones. Fire turns even the Chaos is a ladder, Varys. Leaving newer roots. Space to climb. Whoa, is that his house symbol? Not his house, but like his sigil. Oh, that's cool. I like that a lot, guys. Wow, 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 wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. But anyway, guys, uh, that's going to be it for today. I hope this, uh, you know, keeps you happy until I can get the season three finale out. Uh, make sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe if you're still here watching. I appreciate it more than you know. Peace out.